force majeure, also known as acts of God, earthquakes, volcanoes, avalanches, and droughts. Just to name some of the calamities that can befall, usually without warning. Then there are man-made catastrophes. The consequences of war spring rapidly to mind. Desperate Hours takes a hard-eyed look at some of the most dramatic disasters of the last 100 years. In this episode, you can run for cover, but you can't hide from the wild winds. That means hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, twisters, and typhoons. They are all pretty much different names for the same thing. Powerful windstorms. Well, no, not necessarily. To simplify things, tornadoes and twisters both occur over land, while cyclones, hurricanes, and typhoons form over the sea and mainly affect coastal regions, scattering as they move inland. The winds we'll be talking about on this show carry death, destruction, and heartbreak in their wake. We begin with the biggest blowout of this century, the hurricane they called Katrina. It was a tragedy on an enormous scale that left Louisiana, and indeed the entire United States, reeling in its aftermath. The highest winds and highest storm surge will have, are occurring now or have already occurred along the coast, gradually will be subsiding later today. Reaching wind speeds of up to 175 miles per hour, Katrina is ranked as the third most destructive tropical cyclone to make landfall in the US on record. The other two were the Labor Day hurricane of 1935 and Hurricane Camille in 1969. It is estimated that some 1,836 people died in the August 2005 hurricane and the ensuing floods. Millions more were rendered homeless along the Gulf Coast and in New Orleans, which was the site of the highest death toll. It's all just torn up, everything. This is about the worst one I've seen. We're not used to seeing stuff like this. There is a humanitarian crisis unfolding here in New Orleans. There are thousands of people trapped, running short of food and water, waiting for a bus out of here. For the first time, the operation on these streets is changing from rescuing the living to recovering the dead. The problem is that most of the dead are either underneath this water or trapped in these houses. Now, until this flood water is drained, they will remain there, the true death toll won't be known, and the flood water may not be drained for several months. America's party capital was badly flooded as the levee system failed in spectacular fashion. In some instances, hours after the storm had already moved inland. Approximately 80% of the city and many neighboring townships were flooded, with the floodwaters remaining for weeks to come. In terms of property damage, the worst of it occurred along a chain of Mississippi beachfront towns. It's just amazing how it covered houses, cars, cars moving down the street, just terrible. Well, I didn't think it would be as bad as it was, but it came, came through when, uh, when Ty was coming in. Our house got about a foot of water in it. Everything else around from our um, house down got about waist deep or higher. Look at the destruction. <laughs> Tore up. Anything else you'd like to add? Many government officials came in for criticism after what was seen as a slow and slapdash response effort. 
Ray Najan, the mayor of New Orleans, Kathleen Blanco, the governor of Louisiana, and US President George W. Bush were all lambasted. The president commented that New Orleans had dodged a bullet, yet this was after the White House was informed that the levees in New Orleans had broken and the city was flooding. Vice President Dick Cheney's office instructed a Mississippi electricity cooperative to restore power to a pipeline that sends oil and gas to the Northeast. Doesn't sound so bad. Well, except for the fact that it delayed the restoration of power to two rural hospitals. For the survivors just trying to stay alive or even just afloat, the situation must have seemed helpless at times. Officials at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration later declared that Katrina was the most destructive storm to ever strike the United States. The trauma was certainly real in Myanmar a few years after when Cyclone Nargis struck. A cyclone is a tropical storm, specifically a violent rotating windstorm. The word violent somehow doesn't suffice to describe the utter devastation caused by Nargis. stands on record as the worst natural disaster ever recorded in Myanmar. Making landfall on Friday in May 2008, the destruction was almost incomprehensible. And the fatalities? Estimates vary, but even the most conservative issued by the Myanmar government put the death toll at over 84,000 people, with another 53,000 plus listed as missing. Some 37 townships suffered significant damage, with the UN estimating that as many as 2.4 million people were affected. With winds in excess of 120 miles per hour, Cyclone Nargis became one of Asia's deadliest storms by hitting land at one of the lowest points above sea level in Myanmar, triggering a storm surge that reached some 25 miles inland. Those on the ground didn't need to hear statistics. They knew they were in the midst of a tragedy on a profoundly epic scale. Natural disasters, with their random, indiscriminate brutality, are one thing, but mankind's response is another. And this was one time where politics made a tragic situation worse than it had to be. We now estimate that two million people have faced famine or disease as a result of the lack of cooperation of the Burmese authorities. This is completely unacceptable. There must be unfettered access to humanitarian agencies. Uh, the United States has made an initial aid contribution, but we want to do a lot more. We're prepared to move uh, U.S. Navy assets uh, to help uh, find those who've lost their lives, to help find the missing, and to help stabilize the situation. But in order to do so, uh, the military junta must allow our disaster assessment teams into the country. As a result of the cyclone, the bulk of health facilities in affected areas were either completely destroyed or greatly damaged. 
elements now to make us very, very worried. We've got massive displacement of people. We've got inadequate water supplies. We've got people living in flooded situations. We have very little sanitation there. We have people displaced and living in crowded centers um, or in schools. But when the ruling military junta refused entry into Myanmar by Western humanitarian aid workers, the plight of survivors became still more desperate. With the response of aid agencies thwarted, it became all too clear that in the wake of disaster, humanitarian assistance can't come fast enough. Hurricanes usually have their origins in tropical regions. They form over warm ocean water around 26 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And once they have gathered momentum, can be up to 600 miles across. They are comprised of strong winds spiraling inwards and upwards at up to 200 miles per hour. Hurricanes typically last for about a week, gathering heat and energy as they move over the warm ocean waters. Evaporation from the sea just serves to increase their power. The whirlwind revolves around its center, or the renowned eye of a hurricane. They twist and turn in anti-clockwise fashion in the northern hemisphere, but in a clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. The center of the storm, or eye, is actually the tempest's calmest spot, where there are only light winds and generally fair weather. Yet once it makes landfall, the hurricane's heavy rain, strong winds, and large waves can cause devastation on an almost unimaginable scale. A tornado, on the other hand, is a rapidly spinning tube of air, which touches both the ground and the clouds above. In the US, they are often referred to as twisters. The most violent tornadoes can attain wind speeds of up to 300 miles per hour. They can demolish large buildings, uproot trees, and pick up and hurl vehicles hundreds of feet away as if they were mere playthings. The tornado's path of destruction can be anywhere in excess of one mile wide and some 50 miles long. 1,000 tornadoes are reported in the United States in a typical year. Fortunately, only 2% of these are labeled violent tornadoes. The majority of tornadoes form from thunderstorms. In the United States, for example, when warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico and cool, dry air from Canada meet, that's when the trouble begins. When these two air masses get together, they produce instability in the atmosphere. A change of wind direction and an increase in its speed creates a horizontal spinning effect in the lower atmosphere. Air rising within the resulting updraft tilts this rotating air column from horizontal to vertical. Tornadoes can occur at any time of the year, and no terrain is considered safe. That said, the US averages more tornadoes annually than any other country in the world. A world and time away from military hunters and political strife, the postcard picture-perfect Florida Keys. The setting for scenes of destruction every bit as powerful as anything captured on film. That was the story when the winds whipped up to a Category 4 hurricane back in September 1960. It swept over Florida with terrifying force. Rain fell in torrents and the wind reached a velocity of more than 120 miles an hour. When Hurricane Donna struck here, it had already caused death and destruction in Puerto Rico and other places in the Caribbean. As it lashed the Florida Keys, it repeated its vicious performance. The damage done was bound to run into millions of dollars. While Britain was basking in a few days of Indian summer, the east coast of the United States, including New York, suffered a trail of destruction as Donna continued on her ferocious course.
Hurricane Donna had more serious consequences. This wild wind still holds the record for maintaining major hurricane status in the Atlantic Basin for the longest period, nine days in total. Late in the afternoon on a Sunday in May 2011, the town of Joplin, Missouri was the stage for the kind of tornado that is capable of leveling whole neighborhoods in minutes. Lost my house, lost my garage, lost my friend. When they say that it sounds like a freight train coming, I, that's what I'd always heard, but I never, mm -hmm. it is exactly what it sounds like in the shake, uh -huh. the house is shaken. Leveling suburbs in minutes is exactly what the Joplin tornado did. This town of 50,000 people lay directly in the path of the tornado, which was three quarters of a mile wide at its worst. The tornado steamrolled over Joplin with winds in excess of 200 miles per hour, destroying more than 900 homes, killing over 150, cutting off telephones and electricity supplies, and knocking out a hospital. The destruction left behind a ravaged landscape that seemed surreal, almost alien. there was another fascinating dimension to this natural disaster. With the town of Joplin known as the buckle on the Bible Belt, many of the survivors claim to have had supernatural experiences. Both children and adults claim to have been protected by angels they call the butterfly people or butterfly angels. These butterfly angels seemed real to some and therapists did not try to dissuade believers. Their goal, as always, was to help people to process the trauma they'd experienced. So, whatever works. Why do violent hurricanes often have such safe, non-threatening sounding names? Katrina, for instance, or Hurricane Sandy, unofficially known as Superstorm Sandy. Sandy sounds like somebody's sister with freckles and a ponytail. But let's not be naive. Hurricane Sandy was the most lethal and devastating hurricane of the Atlantic hurricane season for 2012. Moreover, Sandy is listed as being, financially speaking, the second most costly hurricane in United States history. Sandy was formed in the Central Caribbean on October 22, 2012, and intensified into a hurricane as it traveled north through Jamaica, eastern Cuba, and the Bahamas. So sobre Jamaica con una intensidad de huracán categoría 1, con 130 km por hora vientos máximos sostenidos y rachas de hasta 150, 160. The storm is uh, certainly um it's still a hurricane, for one thing, and it's uh, now spinning just north of the Bahamas. And um, you can see from this satellite picture with uh, Carolina up here and Florida here, it's, it's becoming a very large storm system. 
Hurricane Sandy is still about 200 miles off this coast, but you can feel her coming. Those waves have been measured at 35 feet just further out. Now, when that's combined with a high tide later and winds of around 80 miles an hour, they're going to carry those waves right over this boardwalk and smash into Long Island here. When it made landfall in Cuba and the Caribbean, it did what you'd expect of any Category 1 hurricane. It left a path of destruction in its wake and was to blame for several fatalities. The beleaguered island nation of Haiti, still reeling from an earthquake earlier that year, suffered 51 casualties. But it was in New York and New Jersey where Sandy undoubtedly did the most damage of all. Concerned citizens and emergency services personnel had watched carefully as Sandy was reclassified as a tropical storm before strengthening again to a Category 1 hurricane. Informally, it became known as Superstorm Sandy. And when it finally hit the eastern seaboard on October 27th, no amount of precautions and preparations were going to stop it from wreaking havoc on an enormous scale, killing at least 117 people and leaving many, many more destitute and traumatized. The beach might be up this street. They call it the city by the sea. Parts of it will soon be in the sea when high tide brings a huge surge of water. They're already getting out whatever way they can. We stayed with a great cousin last night. She has five kids of her own. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So we're here. I'm trying to get some gas in my car. I'm going, I'm, get, I'm getting out of the city. The city don't love me. I've been here my whole life. It's nothing. My ocean walked through my house and I lost everything I own in 27 years and I'm here five days and living in the street. I'm living in my car. It's a lot worse than a few possessions, you know, because these can be replaced. But the community has been very helpful. You can see over there, all the organizations is giving food and blankets to everybody. So, it's very heartwarming seeing the support of the community. People think of hurricanes, they usually visualize a raging wind, swaying palm trees, and perhaps airborne debris. And while that does occur, that's not what takes people's lives. Water does. In fact, 90% of the fatalities in the United States due to hurricanes is due to water. Of course, most by drowning. Also want to emphasize that of that, 50% comes from storm surge. We passed through the worst, you know, it's over us now, I guess, right? In this episode of Desperate Hours, we have seen coastal regions ravaged by hurricanes. We have seen whole towns flattened by tornadoes. The only form of defense is to flee before they arrive or take cover. The force majeure has spoken.